Hello guys, uh, welcome to part 2 of this game, the Simon Says game. And uh, the last part, the last uh, video, we created the button class and we created the game class with a few instance variable here for the colors, for the flash colors and for the normal colors and also a list that holds all the buttons. And when we run this, we have all the buttons drawn into the screen, but they don't do anything yet. So I think for the next thing to do is to write the audio class. So we're going to have a class here called audio, which will make the sounds. Okay, so we're not going to be sampling sounds. You can also have like, a, you can download like free samples online if you like. But uh, the way I'm going to show you in here is how to use the mixer from Pygame and to create your own frequency sounds. So this code is a little bit long and it can be a bit confusing. It's a little bit more advanced code. I'm going to do my best to try to explain every part of it to you guys. But yeah, just bear with me and just know that it's a little bit more complex, but it works. So for that, we're going to have to import some stuff here at the top. So just after you import the settings, we're going to import math. We're going to need the math method and we're going to also work with the numpy. Okay, numpy basically creates arrays. And uh, we are going to have to initialize the mixer. So pygame.mixer dot init so we're just going to initialize the mixer in here and just after the button class we're going to create another class called audio we're going to create a constructor in here and inside of the constructor we're going to pass one parameter which is going to be the frequency okay which is going to be a integer and it's uh, frequency there we go it's gonna we're gonna be using those beep frequencies that we created earlier so the the frequency the, the those variables as the frequency for each of the buttons so each of the buttons is going to have a different frequency it's going to have a different sound to it inside of this constructor we're going to have a variable here for the duration of the sounds i'm going to put as 0.5 but you can make it longer if you like. So it's just going to beep a bit longer or beep a bit less if you put a, a lower number. So you're going to have 0 0.5 on it. We're going to have a variable for the bits, which is going to be set to 16. I'm just going to try to write all this code and then I'll explain each of the parts after, okay? So we have bits and we're going to have sample rate, which is 4, 4, one zero zero and uh, we're gonna have variable for total samples which it's gonna be a integer a round integer actually of the duration times the sample rate okay so we take the duration times the sample rate and we round that and we make it into an integer we have a data variable which is going to have it's going to be a numpy dot zeros and inside of here we're going to give it a tuple which contains the total sample and another argument as two and the second argument on this is going to be d type and we're going to pass it numpy dot init 16 and we're going to have another variable called max samples so it's going to be the max sample that we can have which is going to be 2 to the power of bits minus 1 minus 1 it's 2 to the power of bits minus 1 minus 1 so this all of this is raised on the power here okay and yeah that's the largest possible value and now we're gonna have a for loop so for sample in range so yeah let me try to explain those variables first actually 
So the duration, as I said, is going to be just the duration of the beep. You can in, you can uh, make that larger if you like. If you want the beep it to, the beep to be longer. And we're going to have the the bit sixteen is the number of bits of data each sample will use. The sample rate is the number of sample rates that will generate in uh, in one second of audio. So that's a very common number for 4100. And the total sample is the total number of samples required by the sample rates and the duration of the audio in seconds. So that's why we have to round this and make it into an integer. Okay, and then we have this data variable in here which is the data that will contain all the samples for the synth wave so we're going to be working with synth wave and the max sample is the largest possible value of a single sample that we can use okay i know it's a bit complex but bear with me it's a little bit complex for me to even to explain this to you as well because i don't know too much about the audio okay i am uh, just learning this as well Okay, so we got all those variables in place. Now we're going to create the for loop, which will go through all the total samples. So for sample in range, uh, not random, in range of the total samples. And we're going to have a variable here called sample time, which in this case is going to be a float of the sample divided by the sample rate. Okay, so the for loop will generate a sample for each of the period of the time of the sine wave and the sample time will calculate the current time for the current sample. So we're going to have another for loop in here which is going to be for the channels. So for channel in range of 2, because we have two channels, so the left and the right, so it generates the data for the left and the right side of the audio. Forgot to put a two in there. And inside of this for loop, we're going to call the data. So this data here is going to be an array because we're calling numpy zero. So it's going to create an, an array. Uh, we're going to call data and then we're going to pass in sample and channel. And that's going to be equals to an integer round again. And that's uh, that's going to be just like a calculation in here to create the sine wave. So that sine waves that goes up and down. So that's the calculation that will create that. So this is the max, uh, whoops, max sample times math dot sine or sin two times math math dot pi times the frequency that we passed in the beginning here uh, times the sample time okay so all of this is a round number is an integer we take the max sample times the math sign and then the math sign is 2 times math pi which is pi 3.14 times the frequency that we pass in here times the sample time that we're generating in here from each of the sample and the sample rate divided by the sample rate okay uh, now outside of this two for loops we're going to create an instance variable in here called self.sound and that's going to be equals to pi game dot s and d array okay dot make sound so that's what's going to generate the sound and we pass the data inside so we create this data which is a sine wave and then we just pass that data inside of this function that makes the sound which will create the sound for us okay and we're going to have another instance variable in here called current uh, channel which will give it to none to begin with okay so that is the constructor i know it's a bit confusing it's a bit 
uh, complicated for me to explain to you as well but yeah that's how you do it okay now uh, we're gonna create an instance uh, instance function here to actually play the sound so we're gonna define play and inside of here we're gonna call the current channel it's equals to pygame dot mixer dot find channel and we're gonna pass in through inside so it's gonna find the channel and self dot current channel dot play the sound so then we play that sound and the channel okay I hope you guys are still with me <laughs> that's all we need to do for this class audio okay as we are here and the sprites I'm just gonna create the last class that we need in here but that's gonna be very easy it's just the UI class to draw the the, the, the elements on top like the score and the high score if you follow my previous tutorial the number puzzle or the snake game you can probably just copy it from there so we have that UI element in there you can just copy it and paste it in here I'm just gonna go through it very quickly so we create a class called UI element and we define a constructor which takes a X and Y and a text that we want to draw self dot x and self dot y is equals to x and y self dot text is equals to text and we create the draw function which will take the screen and we have a variable called font which is by game font sys font I'll just give it consolas for the font family and the size of 16 and we have uh, we, we need to create the text which is fonts dot render self the text true for anti alias and the color is gonna be white and we just blit it to the screen so it's screen dot blit text and then we're going to blit it in the self x and self dot y positions okay so that's everything that we need to do on this sprite uh, file okay so do we have the class button the class audio which I assume is very confusing for a lot of you and we have the UI element class which would draw all the elements to the screen okay so let's go to the fun parts and start writing a bit more of the game class so the next thing I'm going to do in here, as I mentioned on the previous uh, parts, we also have to create a list in here that will hold all the audios, all the sounds. So we're going to create a self dot uh, beeps or self dot sounds, if you like, and that's going to be a list which will contain all the audio classes, uh, all the audio objects. So the first one we're going to call audio beep one. And then it's gonna be the second audio beep two, and then audio beep. Uh, where is the three? Beep three, and then audio beep four. Okay, so we just have this. I just didn't create this uh, variable before because we didn't have the audio classes. So now we have, now we can create them. So we're just creating an object of this class audio and we're passing the frequency inside of each of this. Okay, so the beeps, the different frequencies. Okay, so let's go into the new function here. We're going to create all the variables that we're gonna be using on the update. And every time we lose the game, those variables, it, it will, restart basically so it's going to go to the new function again so every time you you lose it it will just restart this loop we create the new function again and then we run the game so all these functions will all these variables will uh, reset so in here we need a self dot waiting for input so that's going to be when the computer gives you a sequence 
then it would just be waiting in there for your input, okay, for the user input. So we're going to initialize that as false because we're not going to be waiting for the input. The first move is the computer uh, showing us the pattern and then that variable is going to turn to true and then it's going to wait for our input and then it's going to decide if we did it right or wrong. Okay, then we're going to have a self dots pattern in here. It's going to be an empty list which is going to hold all the the patterns. So it's going to start creating the patterns and we're going to start appending to this list so we can keep track of it. And we also have a current step which is going to be zero. So that's going to be the variable for the current step that we are in. So if the computer presses red and blue and then it's our turn, so our current step is zero, so we need to press red. And then this is going to change to one, so we need to press green next. And if we press something else, then we lose. That's the current step is four. We're also going to have the score, which is going to initialize a zero. And just one more uh, variable that we have to put uh, just after the clock.tick in the run function, we have to create a variable in here, which is going to be clicked button and that's gonna be none so this is gonna decide uh, this is gonna tell us which button we clicked last and it's gonna append to this or it's gonna it's not gonna be none it's gonna be the button that we just clicked last it's gonna check in the pattern if we're right and if we are then we just keep going we change the current step and then we change this to none again until we press the next button Okay, so just before we finish this part, let's just go through to our event function and we're just going to create the event in here to see if we're clicking on a button or not. Okay, so in here we're going to check, after we check the pygame.quit, we're going to check if the event.type is equals to button down. So that means we're clicking the mouse button and then we're going to have mouse X and mouse Y that is going to be equals to pi game dot mouse dot get position okay so that is going to return the mouse position X and Y into those variables and then here we're going to go through the buttons list so for button and self dot buttons and we're going to check if button dot clicked mouse x mouse y uh, sorry this is in self dot buttons there so if button dot clicked which is that function clicked in here we pass the x and y in there which is the mouse co coordinates then we do self dot clicked button and we uh, we make it equals to the button dot color okay so that variable that we just create in here which is none every time we click on a button that variable is going to change for the color of the button that's why we create those lists in here so we later we can check on them which which color are we clicking on so which button we're clicking on uh, okay so that's going to be it for this part and uh, I hope you guys didn't get too confusing, too confused by this audio class. <laughs> uh, trust me, it works. And I will see you guys on part three.